Okay, now we're going to talk about a technique that you see sometimes in the mirror in the Old Testament, which I'm going to call bracketing. Bracketing means that the writer of a letter or a section is using the meter in order to point out another section of scripture that the writer is tracking to year by year and is crafting, as it were, um, an annotation to the timeline that he's tracking. Sometimes this is done for parallelism, to say that a future period in history or the period being written about has the same basic historical characteristics as the tagged or bracketed timeline that is being tagged. Now tagging, we saw already here in Luke. You see, down here in the lower window, this is Matthew. And I'm going to show how Luke is tagging and bracketing Matthew. Here, I had already briefly alluded to it, a syllable 203 in Isaiah 53, which in Hebrew starts at Isaiah 52, 13. Syllable 203 is when the temple goes down. Okay? It's not 203 years after the start of Isaiah 53. Because Isaiah inserts an ellipsis of 252 years between Isaiah 52 15 and Isaiah 53 1. That same ellipsis, however, is used by Daniel, who tags the same syllable in Isaiah in Daniel 9. And I did the Daniel meter, Daniel 9 meter videos in Vimeo. You can go look at them to see how Daniel does it to create two timelines. Luke is obviously aware of that, and he's doing the same thing, tagging both Daniel and Isaiah 53 at the same time here. So what he's telling you when he does that is, A, hi, it's as bad as when the temple went down in the Isaiah timeline, which is 586 A B.C. That's what the 203 stands for in, in Isaiah 53. And he's also paralleling what Daniel is doing and Daniel's timeline is the man of time. Daniel's whole prayer is metered based on Daniel 2. The man of time, you know, with the head of gold and the chest of silver and the loins of brass and then the feet of clay and iron, which is Rome, the last one. And it's not necessarily physical Rome, it's the Roman model. Okay, well, the Roman model today is every country on earth. So you can't just physically say it's Rome. That's one of the mistakes that the scholars have made. Is they're a little too narrow in their understanding when that part of it's because they don't know the meter. Our whole United States is, is our entire constitution and its structure is based on the Roman model. So for all we know, we're the we're the great Satan like we're accused of being. And that's one of the reasons I'm working through this timeline because it, it seems to be indicating that in Matthew and therefore I'm looking for it in Luke but Luke doesn't go as far as Matthew does in time so the question is why and the answer to that is he's setting up the precedence he's setting up the cause okay and at this juncture in particular this is when what will later be penned by John is the Revelation 17 harlot this is when it arises in the wake of Constantine, due to Constantine, and especially in the wake of his death with the murdering by his sons, who first murdered all their male relatives and then went about murdering each other. Okay? So this is a pretty important period in history. We call it 450 AD, and when you get down here to 469, you have to add 30 to that to get 499, but you need to see it as a 469 in order to see the tide of Matthew. Okay, remember in the last increment I had said that 469 plus 20 is 489, and that's equivalent to 490 depending on the fiscal year that Luke is using. Now, oh, tell me I can call it up. Wait a minute. There we go. I don't know what happened. Here is Matthew. And here is where the 469 is, 
And here is the next verse in Luke. It's Luke 21, 20. And the parallel to that is down here in Matthew 24, verse 15. Now, the meter in Matthew, when you get here, because this is a parallel passage, tob delugma. Okay? That means abomination. That means something that's sitting in the temple that shouldn't be there. Something that desolates it. And this is the this is abomination, and then tis is the definite article. And we usually translate er, 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 mo, sheus. er mo, sheus. We usually translate as, that as desolation. The desolating abomination. The thing that desolates the sanctuary so that it's no longer holy. It's a, you know, a bad use of the temple. Okay, really bad. All right. And, of course, this text in Matthew is saying, when you see the abomination of desolation, okay, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, in the holy, the holy place, meaning the holy of holies, really, at this point, right there, there's no commas in the original, and there's no diacritics either, so just ignore that. At this point, just before ho anagenoskon, this is 490 syllables, the 490 ending, the 490 time grant ending. It's equivalent to 520 A.D. Luke, very clearly, here, see if I can get this to go down some more, or move it up, I guess. Right here. Okay. Here's verse 15, Matthew 24, 15. And when you come right here, that's the 490's end. After the word topo, topoi, hagioi. That is the same marker, but maybe based on a, a different fiscal that hasn't closed yet, that Luke is using right here. And of course, the holy place is in Jerusalem, so you can see just how closely... Matthew is tracking, I mean, Luke is tracking the Matthew text. It's very, it's very um, interesting. Okay, so now when he's doing that, this is a bracketing technique because in the Matthew meter down here, this syllable right here equates to our 491 A.D. Okay, 491 all right, 469 was where we started. That's 499, not 491. And it's 16 syllables long. So you have to count back eight syllables to get to the exact same place, okay? Which should be Tasukas Hemon. That's five, all right? And we're at 499, so we have to count back four more. Te saste, that's three. Te saste, and then that's three more. So that that's eight. Yeah, four ninety nine minus eight is four ninety one. So just before te saste, all right, is where it exactly equal. This is this is how the bracketing works. Here, it's exactly equal to the same moment in time in Luke, but it's not referencing the same thing, okay? Because what this is saying is basically is, is going back to, you know, whoever endures, you know, to the end, all right? He's, he's literally repackaging the words in Matthew in a different order. Okay, to show how the timeline about the same things is happening specifically for church. So it's a bracket. This is 491 in 491 AD in Luke. So not quite the same thing is true. But when he gets down here to his own end, that still corresponds to Tal Delugma. Alright, but it's not at the same time. 
Now, where you see the bracketing is when you go back and you start to study the history. This is 491 A.D., right here at the toll in Matthew. What happened then? Well, that was when our boy Elias, who was going to become a patriarch in a few years, when our boy Elias was made a priest by Salustius, who was the patriarch of Jerusalem at the time. And it was under Elias that this abominating temple would be built. The abomination of the Neo Teotakas, Neo Teotakas, Neo Teotakas, aka Neo Ecclesia, and you can find it as Neo Ecclesia in Wiki. I'm not too fond of Wiki, but sometimes it's got interesting stuff. And this is the guy who would end up trying to build on top of the Holy of Holies. Okay, see that's down here. But he doesn't complete it. This is what's so hysterical about the way this bracketing works. Okay? When you come down here to the same time moment in Luke, you're not at the same time moment here in Matthew. It's farther down the line. It's right at the end here. See, the time moment in Matthew that's here at verse 15 beginning at tall is up here corresponding to Kisaste in Luke. That's the same time moment. Well, that's because the temple that's the abomination, the guy who was going to start it, the abominator, was made, especially right in here, at Ug, Lug. That's when he becomes the next patriarch. Because he becomes a patriarch in 494 A.D., but he only became a priest in 491. Okay. And he's the guy that starts the, the abomination building on top of the Holy of Holies. But he doesn't have enough money to finish it. So here at 520 A.D., okay, is where the 490 ends. Okay, just ignore this meter, it's wrong. It's total is 44 syllables, so the 35 actually ends here. This is Anonominon's meter. I, you know, he, he did it. And he counted the syllables right, it's just like anybody else. When you're doing a lot of text, you get really tired and sometimes you make a little math error. Okay, so the 35 syllables ends right here. That's, four, that's 490 plus 30 AD equals 520 AD. And our boy didn't have enough money to finish his abomination that he was trying to build. Elias the first. Okay? Now, the reason why this is so important to track it and to peg it, like our boy Luke is doing here, is that what does the text say? It says, it says when you see the abomination... Let the reader understand, that's the last nine syllables here, which is part of the 25 count here. Then get out. Go to the mountains. Okay? And that's what Luke is going to end up saying, but in the next verse. So what you're being told here is that there's like an exit window. Alright? It starts here when our boy Elias just becomes a priest. And it ends... Because you got to know when to get out, okay? It ends in Luke for any Christian, because this is a text that's applying a lot to the Jews. It ends, in other words, if you're still there, you're in trouble. Because that's what the text is saying. Just go to the mountains. All right, just leave. All right? In Luke, this is ending, see, this is 20, that's 489. Okay, the total... And takes you to 505 plus 30 equals 535 A.D. Okay? And then by the time you get here, it's 16 syllables more. So 505 plus 16 is 521 plus 30 is 551 A.D. So you got a window between 491 right here and 551. 491 to 551. So 
So about 60 year window to get out of Dodge if you're a Christian. Here the window is not the same. Here it starts at 491 AD and it ends let's, let's see uh, what's that um, 491 okay wait a minute this will be 520 right here so then 520 plus 25 because these nine syllables are part of the count in the 25 so 520 520 plus 25 is 550 all right so for the Jews they didn't have the same window all right of exit they got to get out by 550 so there's some time but it's like you're not going to really want to be there with you know this in advance it's saying get out and you're reading the timeline to know what's coming and if it says get out you get out and yeah okay it's telling you when to get out Start for, starting in 491 until 550. If you're a Jew, get out of Dodge. Once you hit 550, you won't be in trouble. Okay, and, and telling you how much trouble. Honey, if you're on top of the house, don't even go down that, the pack. And if you're out in the field, don't even go back to the house to get your outer cloak. A himation is an outer cloak. All right? Now, why is that distinction between Jews and Christians made? Well, if you look at the history, you find out. Basically, what happens is starting in 491 with our disgusting boy Elias, all right, you start to have a persecution of first Jews and then Christians that lasts pretty much until the Muslims show up in 638. It changes hands. It goes back and forth. There's 15 years, say, between 614 A.D. and 629 when the Persians come in. They beat Byzantium. They take over uh, the Levant. And they're nice to the Jews for 15 years. Okay, and that's all included in here from 491 to 550. All right. Get out. Why? Because once you're in, if you're in too late, honey, it's going to be really hard to get out. Now, this is also true in the actual literal tribulation. These things are going to also apply, you know, in a, in a different way. But this is like, you know, dress rehearsal because Satan doesn't know when the rapture is going to happen either. So he's always trying to get this kind of stuff done. And so what they were doing was persecuting the Christians. The Byzantines were very violently anti-Semitic. And they were persecuting the Jews and any Christians who disagreed with them also. So this was your window of opportunity. Just know from here, okay, to here, get out. And the Christians, of course, had a little longer window because they were Christians, not Jews. You know, you could keep your faith to yourself and just call yourself a Christian and then silently study Bible without telling anybody. And, you know, a lot of people were doing that. Okay, so this is the kind of thing, the bracketing of the time from here for the Jews, 491 until 550. And then for the Christians, the same 491 when Elias comes to power as patriarch of Jerusalem until about, what, 505 plus 16 is 521 plus 30 is 551. Not one extra year, whoop to do You see how closely Luke is tracking the Matthew text? And you see how he's bracketing it? All right. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you, first of all, that we have the right Luke text. So all those people saying, you know, the Bible is bunk and it's been edited and yada, yada, yada. Well, how could we track it so closely when the scholars don't even know about this meter technique? And there's no evidence that anybody knew about it in the early years. So that knowledge got lost very quickly. The church fathers didn't know. So you can't accuse the people copying the text of writing it to make it this brilliant. Because they didn't even know. We have the text. 
We can look at it. And it very clearly is playing on each other, and the scholars don't know that it's doing that. The Catholic Church doesn't know that it's doing that. The Calvinists don't know what it's doing that, and they're the ones who did the copying. I mean, Calvinism didn't exist until the Reformation, but, you know, there were, as it were, other movements that were protesting against the Catholics. They had their own Bibles, too. They made their own copies, too. Okay, but they didn't know about this because we have no evidence. That's why I'm making so many videos. All the evidence I got to show you that this exists is right in front of your face. It's the actual text we got, with the actual meter being kind of obvious, and it ties to all those other texts in the Bible that I've also done a meter on, and they're obvious, and that's the proof I got for you. You can't rely on calling me a scholar and saying it. You have to actually look at the text of first-hand source evidence yourself. And that's what we're looking at here. And if the evidence is corresponding so closely to real history, only God can determine time. Only God can foreknow time. And he's satirizing the future. We're looking at it. He's basically saying that the Byzantines are so bad, get out of Dodge. Byzantine Christianity is being condemned. Well, they clearly didn't know that, or they wouldn't have, you know, been so careful in their copying, would they? Because they're copying their own condemnation. They didn't know that this was a, historic, a future history timeline against them. The Catholics didn't know that. All right? It's kind of too late now. Cat's out of the bag. Here we go. 49. Diaspora quality. Very bad. And he's giving you an exit window likening, likening this period of time to the tribulation. And what is the tribulation about? Everybody trying to destroy the faithful. And who is the actor in this period? The patriarch of Jerusalem. You getting the drift here? This is anti, anti-Byzantine, anti-Catholicism. Being likened to, you know, the, the evil man of the Daniel's man of time. From Rome, can it be more obvious? Okay? So bracketing is telling you how there's an exit window when there's a little bit here, it's like a year. There's a little bit of difference between the time that your exit window is for you if you're a Jew versus the time window from here to here if you're a Christian. It's about a one-year difference, but it is a bracketing. Okay? Now, in the next increment, I'm going to go forward from that, but I wanted you to see these are these are actual meter techniques that they use in the Old Testament also, but here I'm stressing it on the application between Luke, which is playing directly on the syllables of Matthew, which of course also tells you that Matthew was first, and it was first written in Greek. So ponder that until the next increment.